A staple old school bodybuilding method was to pair antagonistic muscle groups together in a single session. One muscle that opposes the action of another. While the muscle being trained is contracting, the antagonist or opposite muscle is relaxing or lengthening. Classic examples of this are the chest and the back, biceps and triceps, and the quads and hamstrings. Arnold was a big proponent of training the chest and the back together, and he even took this a step further by supersetting these muscle groups, where he would train one set of chest and then move directly without any rest to train the back. Sergio Oliva also trained using this method, as well as many other bodybuilders back in the 60s and 70s. The classic old school six day split generally called for chest and back, shoulders and arms, legs, and then repeat, taking Sundays off to rest. Today, many bodybuilders argue that this is an outdated method, and they claim you need to train each muscle group individually to get the most out of each and every gym session. The reason most people think that you need to train only one body part per session is because they simply don't know how to properly program a full week of training to allow both progressive overload as well as recovery. Many people would say that they've tried pairing two large muscle groups together and either they couldn't recover enough to hit those muscles again later in the week or it was just too much to train both the chest and the back in one single session and the overall quality of work suffered. This is a very common response, and I bet even you've experienced this yourself if you've tried training this way. But in this video, I'm gonna break down the four key principles for an effective chest and back training program. First, you must determine the weekly frequency of each muscle group. If you're pairing the chest and the back together in one workout, but only training these muscle groups once per week, there's little to no reason to combine them in one single session. To get the most out of this muscle pairing, it should be to train each body part at least two to three times per week. Now, based on this frequency, we're then gonna determine how many sets should be done in each session next. To do that, we move on to the second principle, which is volume. Most people train with an average of 10 to 15 sets per body part. So someone might take the traditional bro split and attempt to increase the volume to two times per week. They'll take that same 12 set chest workout from Monday, and then they'll repeat it again on Thursday. And when they do this, it's no wonder why it didn't work. Not only did they increase the frequency to twice per week, but they also doubled the weekly training volume. This is not what you want to do when increasing training frequency. High frequency training shines by splitting up your weekly volume for higher quality work. That same person could benefit by training six sets of chest on Monday and then the other six sets on Thursday. By doing only one half of his normal workload of chest in one session, this frees up plenty of time to train another large muscle like the back. Once you determine the frequency and the volume you'd be training with, the third step is to assess the intensity. The question now is, how hard should you be training? Many people have trouble leaving their egos at the door and they wanna hit PRs every single session they're in the gym. On a high volume, high frequency program, this is a recipe for disaster. When you're training a muscle group, especially on a high frequency program, you should be training that muscle, not maxing out or trying to be a hero. To stimulate muscle without over fatiguing them or causing excess strain on the nervous system, the majority of your sets should be within one to two reps shy of failure. Despite what many people claim, if you study the majority of top pro bodybuilders dating all the way back to the origins of bodybuilding and even pros today, the majority of their training are all done just shy of failure. This doesn't mean easy, it just means you should be able to perform each and every lift with 100% confidence and not have to rely on a spotter to grind out additional reps. Finally, the last key to the equation is exercise selection and pairings. Big compound movements for chest and back are very demanding. There's no way around it. And many people would say regardless of how low the volume is, it's just too difficult to perform at your best when you have to do something like heavy barbell bench paired with something heavy like barbell rows, all in the same workout. And this is something I agree with. The key, however, to getting a quality chest and back workout together is by picking the right exercises to pair with each other in one single training session. For example, if you're training the chest and the back twice per week, the first workout can be a heavy chest focus workout where you concentrate on barbell and dumbbell presses. But for back, the focus is isolation movements, as well as less demanding work, like lap pulldowns and machines that are less taxing on the nervous system. Later in the week, it's the exact opposite. You can start your back training with heavy rows, free weights, and big compound movements. And for chest, you can focus on machines and fly variations. This keeps the quality of work high and equal for both sessions. Here's an example of one of the current weekly chest and back workouts look like inside our old school mass gain training membership program. Monday is heavy chest and light back training. Thursday, it's heavy back training and light chest training. Monday's workout consists of flat barbell bench press for three sets of six to eight reps, followed up with incline dumbbell press for three sets of eight to 10 reps, 
and finishing off the chest with dips for three sets of eight to 10 reps. Going into the back portion of the workout, first we're gonna hit lat pull downs for three sets of 12 to 15 reps, and then cable pullovers for three sets of 15 to 20 reps. That's it for workout one. Now Thursday, we're gonna start off with barbell rows for three sets of six to 10 reps, then into dumbbell rows for three sets of eight to 10, and finishing off the back with wide grip pull-ups for three sets of as many reps as possible. Going into the chest portion of the workout, you're gonna start off with inclined dumbbell flies for three sets of 15 to 20 repetitions. And then finishing off the second chest workout of the week with machine presses for three sets of 12 to 15 reps. In this setup, each muscle group has an average weekly volume of 15 sets per muscle group. And because the workload is split up over two days, the quality for that individual muscle group actually stays much higher and generally heavier weights can be used and more overall quality work is done. Now, if you're looking to incorporate high frequency training into your own program, give this sample workout a try and comment below with your results. And if you wanna follow along the exact routines using these old school bodybuilding training methods, you can join our old school mass gain training membership program where you have access to new workouts every single month. For more details, make sure to visit all the links below in the description. And if you wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.